Okie smoke. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the structure and function of lipids, and we're going to be focusing on triglycerides and phospholipids. So let's just have a think about what triglycerides are. All lipids contain the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and we're going to talk about their arrangement. Triglycerides are made up from glycerol and three fatty acids. That's where the tri comes from, three. Triglycerides are the main components of body fat in humans and all other vertebrates, as well as in vegetable fat. So we find them in both plants and animals. We also find triglycerides in our bloodstream. So we transport fat to and from our fat tissue, our adipose tissue, in the form of triglycerides. We also find quite a lot of triglycerides in human skin cells. So it's found in lots of different parts of the body. Let's take a look at the structure. So a triglyceride is made up of one glycerol molecule and three fatty acids. And let's take a look at how they join together. In the next section, you're going to learn the structure of glycerol and the structure of saturated fatty acids, monounsaturated fatty acids, and polyunsaturated fatty acids. You're then going to learn about esterification, so the formation of ester bonds between the fatty acids and the glycerol molecules to form a triglyceride. So we can see that a triglyceride has three ester bonds and three molecules of water are released in the formation of one triglyceride molecule. We can also see that triglycerides have a really high ratio of carbon-hydrogen bonds and this gives them a low mass to energy ratio. That means a small amount of triglycerides will release a lot of energy. This is fantastic. This is why fat is a really excellent energy storage for both plants and animals. One gram of glycogen will give off about 1.33 kilocalories of energy, whereas one gram of fatty acids will give off nine kilocalories of energy. And if the human body relied solely on carbohydrates to store their energy, then a person would need to carry around 31 kilos of glycogen to have the energy equivalent of 4.6 kilos of fat. That's pretty incredible. And that shows us why fat is such an important molecule for energy storage. Let's just have a quick think about how the structure of triglycerides are related to its properties. Well, first of all, it's insoluble. And this is important because it means that it can be contained within a cell. It won't dissolve away and be lost from the cell. And it also won't affect the water potential of the cell. And so it won't cause osmosis of water into or out of the cell. When lipids are oxidized, it releases a large amount of water. What that means is when lipids are used in respiration, about 110 grams of water per 100 grams of fat will be produced which is a lot. Compare that to about 41.3 grams of water per 100 grams of protein and about 55 grams of water per 100 grams of starch. Why do we care about that? Well, it can be really useful for animals that live in really dry conditions. For instance, camels. When we think about camels humps, sometimes people really mistakenly think that those humps contain water. They don't. They contain fat. And when that fat is metabolized, it releases the water that they can then use to survive on in these really dry conditions, which is pretty amazing. One final camel fact before we move on. Camels with two humps are called Bactrian camels and are found mainly in Central Asia. 
whereas camels with one hump are called dromedary camels. These are larger and they have a much wider range. They're found in northern Africa, Ethiopia and western and central Asia. Okay, let's move on to the phospholipids next. Phospholipids. How are they different to triglycerides? Where are they found? And how is their structure related to their function? A phospholipid actually looks very, very similar on a molecular level to a triglyceride. It's got a glycerol molecule, and then it's got two hydrophobic fatty acid tails. One of the hydrophobic fatty acid tails has been replaced by a hydrophilic phosphate group. The fact that phospholipids are polar, meaning that they have a hydrophilic phosphate head and a hydrophobic tail made up of two fatty acids, means that in an aqueous, a watery environment, the phospholipid molecules will form a bilayer. If you were to drop a handful of phospholipids into a bowl of water, they would spontaneously form into a sphere. And that sphere would have um, uh, phospholipids pointing with their heads pointing both inwards and outwards. and form a very, very basic version of a cell surface membrane. So it forms this hydrophobic barrier between the inside and the outside of a cell. Another useful property of phospholipids is that their structure allows them to form glycolipids by combining with carbohydrates within the cell membrane. And these glycolipids are important in cell-to-cell -cell recognition. Okay, so I want to round off this video with two final things. One, the roles of lipids in living organisms, and two, how we test for lipids. So, uh, lipids have many roles, and we've mentioned most of them already. So we've mentioned them as a source of energy. So when they're used in cellular metabolism, they provide twice the energy as the same mass of carbohydrate, and they release valuable water. We've talked about why that's beneficial. We've also already mentioned the role of lipids in the formation of the cell membrane and the formation of molecules like glycolipids. But there are a couple of other things I want us to mention. Lipids are important in waterproofing. So because lipids are insoluble in water, they're really useful as waterproofing. Plants and insects have waxy lipid cuticles which conserve water, so they prevent them from dehydrating. So they prevent water from evaporating from their surfaces and you will have learnt about this at GCSE when you learnt about the waxy cuticle on leaves. And we also know that mammals, and we're mammals, produce an oily secretion from the sebaceous glands in their skin. So we constantly produce oils that coat our skin and prevent water from evaporating from the surface of our skin. And if we didn't have that, we would become dehydrated a lot more rapidly. We also know that fats are really important for insulation. So fats are really slow conductors of heat. So for instance, you will have learnt at GCSE about the myelin sheath, a fatty sheath that surrounds neuronal cells. And this fatty sheath uh, speeds up the rate of conduction of nervous impulses and also enables mammals to retain body heat. Just think about polar bears or seals or any aquatic mammal that would otherwise lose heat really rapidly to their environment. They have lots and lots of blubber. They have a layer of fat underneath their skin that insulates them to prevent the loss of heat from their body. We also put fat around our delicate organs. So all of our internal organs have a really important layer of fat. And this protects our internal organs from, the impa from impact. So if you were to f have a fall, for instance, that layer of fat around your internal organs, like your liver and your kidneys and your intestines, absor can absorb that shock and prevent any damage to your internal organs. Okay, so the last thing that I said that I would talk to you about today would be the test for lipids. So the test for lipids is called the emulsion test. And so what would we do? We would take a, a totally clean and dry test tube and we'd place two centimeters cubed of our sample, uh, so something that we think would contain a lipid. And then we would add five centimeters cubed of ethanol and we'd give that a really big shake in order to dissolve any lipids that are in the sample into the ethanol. 
Once we'd done that, we would add five centimetres cubed of water and we'd give it another little gentle shake. If lipids are present in our sample, we would expect to see a milky white emulsion. As a control, you'd repeat the procedure, but you just use water instead of using your two centimetres cubed of sample. And we should be able to see that that solution would remain clear throughout. So we'd be able to make a comparison between a positive result and a negative result. Let's just check that we understand that term emulsion. An emulsion is a mixture of two or more liquids that are normally immiscible. Immiscible means that they won't mix together usually. So in an emulsion, one liquid, in this case our lipid, is dispersed within the other. At GCSE, you will have learned about this when you did digestion and you learnt about how when lipids were digested within your digestive system, they first need to be needed to be emulsified. Remember, they were emulsified by bile, and the value of that is that it breaks them down into smaller droplets to increase their surface area for the action of the enzyme. And we know that the enzyme lipase is the enzyme that breaks down lipids into fatty acids and glycerol. So you will have heard that term before. I'm just trying to think if there are any other key terms that I should really clear up before I finish this off. And even though it's been mentioned, I don't think I've explicitly explained it. But in general, there are three types of lipids. There are fats, which are solid at room temperature. There are waxes, which are also solid at room temperature. And there are oils, which are liquid at room temperature. So we tend to find oils in plants. We tend to find fats in animal tissue and we also tend to find waxes in plants. And I actually think that's pretty much everything that you need to know about the structure and function of lipids for now. So well done.